What's up everyone, it's Jake here and welcome back to Almost Vintage Style and today we are doing another boot review. Uh, today, wait, is my collar messed up? That's the one thing I don't like about this jacket is the collars on my shirts can kind of write up on it. Anyway, we are not talking about this leather jacket today. I'm going to review this eventually, but it's one of those things that I love it so much I kind of save it for later to review. I do that with a lot of <laughs> products when I really, really like them. Um, we're talking about boots actually today and we're talking about a brand that has well depending on when i released this video relatively not that long ago um changed their name uh this was benzene shoes and now they go by bristle black boots um so yeah actually they changed their name yesterday as of the filming of this video so depending on this video comes out you'll know how long ago i filmed this um but today i've already reviewed the engineer boots that I had from them, and I have already sold those. Uh, they didn't really quite fit right. There were some issues with the last and everything like that. It just, I think it needed some refinement. Um, and today we are kind of talking about a fairly similar issue, though I'm not sure it's quite as bad in terms of like objective issues with the last. This is my pair of benzene or now bristle black Chelsea boots that I'm also selling right now. They've not been sold yet, but I, I am offering them for sale. Uh, they probably have already been sold by the time of this video. If not, I will let that be known. Um, but yeah, I do actually like a lot of things about these boots, but there's some stuff that I don't like so much about them, so we're gonna talk about that. Now, first of all, this brand used to be called Benzene. They're now called Bristle Black. I don't like that name change, but whatever. They didn't really, ex well, as of right now, they didn't really explain exactly why they did the name change. They just said for you know various reasons, I think is really what they said. Um, but they changed their name. Eh, you know, it's not the end of the world, uh, but they did change the name. So this, if you don't know who Bristle Black slash Benzene is, um, they are an Indonesian brand. They, you know, do the thing that most engineer, uh, most engineers, <laughs> most brands from Indonesia do, which is that they hand weld their boots, um, and they, you know, have a mixture of, you know, Indonesian uh, materials uh, and uppers, and then they also have some imported stuff, you know, from like America and Japan and Italy and stuff like that, and um, yeah, hand welted shoes for relatively affordable prices. But as a lot of people have come to learn more and more about Indonesian brands, the prices have gone up and up and up. Probably to a point now where most of them are not like a screaming deal anymore. Um, they're probably more like a relatively fair uh, price, basically. Um, there's some like, there. not all in Indonesian brands are the same, obviously, but there's a lot of general things with them. Um, Construction quality, usually very high actually, like the stitching is usually very clean. The the outsole stitching is usually done by hand and usually very clean. Edge finishing is usually very good. Um, and uh, if you get Indonesian leathers, it's usually not very good. If you get some foreign leathers, it's usually good, but their clicking's not always great. Um, interior components are a little more iffy because they often use stuff from like Pakistan and like Pakistani leathers for their insoles and like a lot of other brands which will use, you know, American or Italian uh, leathers for their insoles or Japanese leather for their insoles and stuff like that. Um, and the designs and the lasts are usually a little bit unrefined compared to a lot of other makers from like England and the United, well, some United States brands, Japan and stuff like that, okay? That's, those are general things. And a lot of that is true with benzene, but there's a little bit of a difference. One, this last, this is their Tombak last, I think is what they called it when I got it from there. I'm just checking on my phone right now. Yeah, Tombak. Not always easy to remember like the names of all these lasts and stuff like that from a lot of different brands. This looks great. Okay, I want to say right now, this is in my, this is my probably, okay, here's the thing. I was blown away when I saw these boots, okay? Now, I did get these for free. Let me explain how I got that, because obviously that obviously means I'm a little bit biased, but I was shocked at how nice these boots look, which is also partly why I'm disappointed that I have to sell them. Some boots I sell, I really have no qualms about selling them. I don't feel bad, you know, um, I'm happy to sell them and get some money for them. Some boots, I'm upset that I have to sell them because I actually like them, but there's fit issues. And this is the case with this, is that I wish I didn't have to sell these. Um, anyway, I, I purchased a pair of their engineer boots a while back. I don't even remember how long it was ago now. Um, 
and uh, I told them I was going to do a review on them and stuff because I always do. If, if I, you know, anytime I pretty much reach out to a brand, I don't ask for free stuff, but I tell them, yeah, I'm probably going to review these just so you know. Um, and so I purchased the engineers and as I guess they wanted to send me a pair of Chelsea's for free just to review them also. Um, I had some issues with that first pair of engineers, then I got the second pair and it was much better, but it's still not perfectly fixed, which again, I have already done that video and I'll put it either up here somewhere or I'll put it down in the description if you wanna watch that video as well because I think that's also very helpful um, to talk about this brand. And you'll, I'll only refer them as benzene back then. But I got these boots and they fit better than the first pair of engineers did, but over time I realized they still don't actually fit. Um, but they, the thing is with the engineers, I designed, well, okay, they did the last design basic stuff, but I chose like the components and like the, you know, what he, I wanted the specific, was that he, the, I wanted to make sure it was, you know, regular woodsman heel, um, you know, half soles, the color of the half soles, the, you know, the leather, the, all that stuff, right? They, benzene or bristle black now, they chose all of the components of this boot. I didn't even choose that as a Chelsea boot. They just said they were gonna send me something. I was very nervous because most of the time when brands say they wanna send me something and I don't know what it is or when people just like, when I let a company or when anybody lets companies just kinda of go crazy, they sometimes go too crazy. And I'm very picky about my boots and boot designs and lasts and stuff like that. So I was worried, honestly, honest to God, I was worried they were gonna send me like, a pair of like blue or green boots on a wedge sole or something, you know, ridiculous like that, or just another service boot or, and they, this is freaking gorgeous, okay? I gotta give Bristleback a lot of credit here and that they went restrained and classy as all heck because this boot is freaking beautiful, okay? There is just no getting away from that. And yes, you can say I'm biased because I got it for free. I don't care. I genuinely think no matter what, I would say this is a beautiful boot. They did everything I would have wanted. They, they must have, I don't know if they just like, they actually looked at every, all of my preferences because they didn't ask me any questions. They just, I hope I'm either, they just made a design that worked perfectly for me or they actually looked at all my preferences because it's, it's a Horween horse butt leather that they over dyed to this gorgeous, rich, dark brown color that I absolutely adore. Um, it's, and they also chose to do it on what's basically kind of like a Cuban-ish heel, a Cuban or almost a dogger-ish heel on this boot, which is taller than a normal Chelsea heel. And because there's still like a very nice looking uh, unstructured toe on the Tomback last, and it's fairly squared, so it kind of gives you a little bit of vibes of a, um, of a, like a, of an R.M. Williams kind of, and... It's not as sleek as most Chelsea boots. I, the thing is for me, is this changed everything I think about Chelsea boots. Because I always said that I only liked really sleek Chelsea boots. Like, R.M. Williams is the chunkiest Chelsea boot I would ever think was an acceptable Chelsea boot, okay? Um, most of the time when brands do Chelsea boots, they're always too chunky and they don't look like Chelsea boots. Like, either get a roper or a cowboy boot or an engineer if you want a pull-on boot that's like a bit bigger or just get an actual sleek Chelsea boot. Like, like Carmina, I have a pair of Carmina, I've had a couple pairs of Carmina Chelsea boots. Something like that, like Carmina or you know any of the other high end, higher even higher end brands, but they're just a good basic example, right? But this changed everything because this actually, I mean, it's still relatively sleek by like, you know, if you're used to Whites and Wesco and Red Wing and stuff like that, and you know, Flame Panda and Quan Shoemaker and all that, these are relatively sleek, but they're still, not super duper sleek and you know they're not beetle boots okay they're not i mean they have the heel kind of like that but they're not as sleek as you know they're not uh uh saint laurent slp boots right they're not like that okay and this is just a really nice design they they did a really good job the last looks really nice which is nice too because most of the time um indonesian boot brands just kind of try to what they've done for a long time is they just like adapt derby lasts to everything and the derby lasts aren't even that good in the first place this actually looks like it is made for this type of boot and it looks beautiful. It doesn't, it doesn't slope here. It's not too much of a ramp here. It's actually got a good amount of toe spring you can see. And it was like that when they were new. Like I haven't worn these that much. 
And so it's a gorgeous design. And that's rare to find with a lot of Indonesian brands. The other example, like to me, the two best brands for design in Indonesia, besides uh, Winston, because I think Winston makes really nice shoes, but those are mostly dress shoes, um, are Sagara, because their Cordmaster is freaking beautiful. That is a really good design, like just straight up by any standards. That's a really nice looking um, uh, lace to toe. Uh, uh, lineman or roofer boot or whatever you want to call it monkey boot there you go i can't believe i forgot that um that's a great boot design i think a lot of their other boots actually are pretty well designed. i actually think their hiker is a pretty good looking hiker some of the makeups go crazy but it's actually i think a good looking hiker uh and their you know the regular service boots a pretty good looking service boot that actually doesn't try too much to be like a viberg um so they do a good job i think of design um and i think benzene is still they i think they still have a ways to go because like with their I think it's the K-Pack last for the engineers. It's still not as refined as it should be, but it's better than any other Indonesian engineer boot in terms of looks. I'll give them that for sure. It, and they keep trying to improve. I really like that about this brand. But this is just like a gorgeous Chelsea boot. Um, and not everybody is really good at that, but Benzene slash Bristleback seems to be like the Chelsea boot maker for Indonesia. And these are gorgeous. I love the heel that they chose. I love the leather they chose. I love everything about how these boots look. It's almost making me want to try to keep them, but they just don't fit right. So these are 43.5. And the thing is, what I'm not sure is, I'm not 100% sure whether or not the issue is that I just needed half a size bigger, or if the last still has a little bit of issues, or maybe it just doesn't work for me because my toes still slide forward and kind of get pinched here. I don't feel like they're actually at the edge of the last because like otherwise it actually feels pretty snug and secure. I didn't get, I don't get heel slip with this. It's actually a pretty nice and pretty curved, um, you know, heel counter here, which I think is good. I like that. And it feels pretty secure once I put my feet in. Um, and it's not snug here. It's not too, it's not too narrow or anything like that. I have a 10.5 D to E width feet on a US Brannock. They feel fine there. And they don't feel like super cramped, like squished together. It's just they feel cramped like from the kind of the, the front slash top is really the issue with these. That's the problem for me. Uh, also, yeah, Dr. Soul, Super Grip Hap Souls. Uh, they went with black, which I actually think was a perfectly fine choice with the super dark brown that they went with everything else. Blends in just fine. Um, and I think even the, the material here is actually a dark brown, which looks good. So, I mean, they just did everything right here. And again, I didn't ask them for anything. It is lined on the inside, which a lot of people like. I personally don't, I never really seem to care about that. The Red Wings I, I, I did a video on, like they're not lined on the inside. I never noticed, it just doesn't matter to me. But hey, they are lined on the inside. Actually feels pretty nice. Um, and they, they felt comfortable except for this part and that's the problem. Um, yeah, uh, but good materials otherwise. Uh, the construction quality, very good on these. Uh, I think the leather could have been cut a little bit more cleanly. There's a little bit of like, you can see the grain you know, the fibers here and there, and even on the side a little bit. So that's like, honestly, my biggest quality control complaint. Hopefully you can see. Other than that, like the stitching is very clean. The edge finishing is very nice overall. The welting on the, you know, midsole is very nice here. Very cleanly done. And, um, it's, it's neat, it's not too, it's not like a ramp, it's not really far out or anything like that. It's nice and neat and tight and close, you know, where it should be. That's really good too. And that's true for both boots. Yeah, that's consistent on both boots. It's also a hole cut Chelsea, which is really cool. As you can see, there are no seams on the sides here. There's just the single seam down the back also fantastic and the leather is absolutely stunning there's a lot of stuff they did absolutely right with this pair of boots and i really love that and i want to you know say that because my biggest complaint with like i said with with indonesian boots overall is their design and this boot is masterfully designed in my opinion and not just by indonesian standards by any standards this is a to me in my opinion i obviously design subjective but to me, this is just a freaking gorgeous Chelsea, but it even has enough toe spring. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. So the only pair of non-super sleek Chelsea boots, non-dress Chelsea boots, that I actually think looks great. And so that's saying something. Now, again, 
Is that maybe because they gave it to me for free? I guess you could say that. I I, I want to be transparent with that. I don't think that's why, because I'm even having to get rid of them. But I really do think that. Um, and I've gone and seen other Chelsea boots they've done. I think they look nice, but there's something about you know this pair with this heel and all this stuff that I think is better than some of the other that I like more than some of the other ones they've done. But I know a lot of other people have talked about their Chelsea boots. I think Ticho talks about like benzene Chelsea's and stuff before. I'm pretty sure I'm remembering that he's talked about that. God, the leather looks so great too. Like, this is why I say like, just because I don't like Chrome XL doesn't mean I don't like Horween. <laughs> like, this is a really nice leather with some really nice green. I don't it even could be Chrome XL, but I don't think it is. Um, anyway, because it's too much. Yeah, because Chrome XL is corrected, so it doesn't shouldn't have this green. But whatever, this is a gorgeous leather. I think they, I think Benzene overdyed it or Bristol Black. I don't know, but it's freaking beautiful. So yeah. In terms of looks, they're fantastic. Uh, and most parts of the fit are actually good. I think maybe either they're a half size too small, which would also mean I might, if I got a bigger size, they might be compromised in other aspects of the fit if I got a 44. You know, that's the thing. Um, or they're just the toes just doesn't work for me. The last looks, ref it doesn't look like there should be a problem. So maybe it's just a sizing issue. I'm not sure. Here's the thing, I don't want to force them to make another pair of boots for me for free, because that's messed up. Like, it was already way too nice of them to do that for me. Um, I've said before, their, their engineers still need a little bit of refinement, right? So that could be the issue here with this pair of boots, right? I don't want to say like, oh, these are perfect and it's just my fault they don't fit. I don't know if that's the case. It could be, but it might not be, right? I want you to be aware that still a, an issue with a lot of, this is, you know, if you're ordering stuff overseas, you could have issues with fit and just in general with I would say the exception of Sagara and maybe some others but like when I've ordered from other Indonesian brands and had experience with other Indonesian brands the sizing is an issue and you will not always get the right fit and I don't know I mean obviously part of that is that you're ordering from far away but if you, if you send measurements I've still had issues sometimes um, and the lasts I think are not refined in some ways so they're not quite fitting right and I think that's still an issue I think this brand might still need to work on the nice thing about them is they are so humble and they are they they take the feedback very well so I say this not as a as for like for people to avoid the brand because they are a brand that I personally believe is one that is worth supporting and I think they're the kind of brand that you know within like a year or so or maybe I don't know what amount of time but they could fix all of the problems that I have with their boots right and be just a fantastic brand to purchase from right and I think for some people they could already be that right um I'm just saying there are it's not like I'm, I'm not going to also just tell you you know, just go out and buy these right now they're perfect they're the best deal ever the best in Chelsea boots ever because that's not quite what I think either right and again, it also depends on what you're looking for, right? If you want like a chunkier Chelsea, which I don't know why you would, that's weird. These aren't that either. They're a great balance of refined and um, and like a little bit like, you know, still um, heritage Amakaji-esque, right? I don't know what you want to call it, right? I'm not gonna say uh, the word that, that everybody wants me to say. Um, but yeah, they're really nice. They're really, really nice. So yeah, this has, this is the, hold on, what, if you want to go for this look, this is, it's like a Horween overdyed brown horse pied, um, and it's on the Tomback last, which I do think is very pretty, and if you don't have big toes or whatever, if you're not worried about the fit, then this would be the last to go for, I think, for their Chelsea's, and, or something similar, it's a nice square toe, which I think is really nice for this. Um, or, and the, and like on this kind of, uh, you know, it's almost a, it's not quite a cowboy heel. It's almost like a, a, a roper slash, um, dogger heel. I'd say it's not as sharp as a Cuban heel. It's kind of what I would call it. But yeah, you know, what else I think they should make with this, they should make like an actual, they should try to do a roper boot like this. That would also look really good. So yeah, Bristleback, if you're looking at this, like make a roper boot with all this stuff. Okay, or, and see if the last is the issue. Do that too, I'm not sure. Could just be that we got the wrong size. I could have just needed a 44. But yeah, that's the boots. I definitely want to talk about them before they actually add to my collection because there's a lot I do like about them. There's some kind of issues, right? Um, 
in terms of overall quality control, so now I've had three pairs from this brand because I had the first Chelsea's, I had the second, sorry, first engineers, the second engineers, and now these. They're all good. Like I haven't had quality control issues with any of them. They've been very consistent. So that's good. Like, I mean, are they as, you know, perfect as, you know, White Cloud and Flame or Flame Panda? Like, and are they quite as nice as Quan Shoemaker? Because that guy, I haven't, I don't have anything room, but every time I see pictures of his boots, like you can just see how nice the quality is on his stuff. Uh, no, but they're very good. Like really, really good. And price-wise, so the engineers last time they told me they were something around 625, but they could have gone up since then. I would guess these are probably around 600, like 550 to 600. They could be 650 now. Honestly, at any of those prices, for the fact that they're hand welted, the, the horse hide that they use, qual the quality of the construction, and even the design, honestly, at this point, I would pay any of those prices. Like if it's 550 to 650, I mean, God, even 700 for most people should be worth it with these, depending on what the insole materials are. That's the one thing you would want to ask them about to double check. I'm not going to ask them about that right now because they are not, you know, they've, they've gone through a lot of changes and I don't want to bug them about stuff right now, you know, be, and it could change by the time you watch this video. That's the other thing. So what I say, when you, when you talk to these brands, especially like Indonesian, Chinese, even Japanese boot brands that you don't know very much about, or even American boot brands that don't already tell you what's going into their shoes. If you're going to order, especially from people that you're ordering direct from that you don't have a lot of information on, ask them what's in the materials. And especially, the thing is, especially with like the Indonesian brands, because stuff changes so often, you want to ask them, sometimes they give them the benefit of the doubt that they may have upgraded stuff too. Because like my brother's old pair of cigars were like from years ago were, were quality, material wise terrible. And then my cigars were way better. Like the, 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 the improvements they have made a lot of these brands over time is ridiculous. Prices have gone up accordingly, but I, don't, I think that's still fine, right? I don't think that's bad. Like again, even if these were 700, I think that's a fair price depending on what's on the insole materials or midsole materials, right? Um, everything I can see, that's still a fine price. But I think they're probably more like 550 to 600, maybe 650. And, even, and again, that's a, very, that's a good price too. I would pay that for these. Uh, my biggest thing is the only reason I would actually buy something like this again to try to get the fit right is one, I've had too many issues with the fit that I'd be worried about spending that much money. But also, um, I wear really wide trousers and jeans and stuff. I really only have one pair of trousers that I feel looks good with Chelsea's. So it's not as worth it to me to try that. Maybe two pairs that I think look good with Chelsea's. So, um, but if you like Chelsea's, then, then this is a good option, I think. I would, I would definitely consider this brand, but just be aware of like maybe the downsides. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough. Hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, and if you have your experiences, anything you know about pricing since I've recorded this and since I've posted this or whatever, um, please add that stuff to the comments. I think that's very helpful. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.